This is it. This is the video you guys have been begging me to make since the start of the regular season and after Sunday's overtime loss to the Titans, I couldn't wait much longer. This is the film room on Jalen Mills. The former 7th round pick is currently tied for the NFL with 4 penalties. It's not a good trait you want to lead the league in and on Sunday, he allowed 6 catches for 112 yards, 99 of those went against Corey Davis. So is there a problem with Jalen Mills or is there something else at Frey here? Is it the scheme? Is it maybe a combination of things? Surely there has to be something more to the fact that there was a player who one year ago was seen as one of the heroes of this team making big play after big play and in 2018 is just become one of the most inconsistent corners on the roster and a defensive liability. So what's going on with the Green Goblin? Is he now a hero or is he remaining a villain? My name is Liam Jenkins and this is an episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get into the analysis though, I know this is a video you guys have been wanting, so if we could get to a thousand likes, that would be monumental. Let's change the game, let's keep this momentum rolling and build the best Eagles community on YouTube. And don't forget, for all your Philly Sports needs, phillysportsnetwork.com is where you can find mine and the rest of the guys work 24-7. We've got to start this analysis though with actually a positive from Jalen Mills, and the Eagles rolled out a lot of zone coverage to try and negate the loss of Rodney McLeod. We saw a lot of cover two and cover three with the corners playing much further back from the ball than they normally do but it didn't mean that Mills was all bad. Sure of course there were the receptions he gave up but this was an example of some of the better coverage he played. The Eagles have got a lot of bodies in the middle of this field but watch how Mills is able to divide it up, keep the receivers in check and just keep his head on a swivel knowing that his eyes are going to be fixed on where that ball is coming out of Marcus Mariota's hands. Now already you can see himself angled towards the inside of the field what he wants to do is push himself back towards the sideline if possible knowing that he's got a man next to him and Avante Maddox who can help take away the middle of the field. So as the play begins, Mills starts his back paddle. You've got two receivers now streaking towards him. He opens his hips inside, of course forcing the receiver outside along with another cornerback. Mills keeps his head on a swivel as we said, looking for the ball and just by positioning alone is able to close off that window. That is nearly perfect zone coverage from the former 7th round pick. The Eagles ran a lot of cover three, and when there were safeties on cue, Mills performed comfortably and confidently. We'll see an example of that here. You've got a receiver streaking inside, Mills positioned his body to the same fashion, and then rolls around the back of the receiver, knowing the play action isn't coming his way. But we'll see it here again. Watch Mariota as he comes out of the pocket. By this point, Mills knows the receiver's going to have to make a comeback route to adjust to the play action, adjust very well. Good play by the Eagles corner. Inside the red zone, his responsibility here is once again half of the field. Keeps his body positioned inside. He keeps his eyes fixed on the quarterback. He doesn't need to worry about those receivers until Mariota faces in his direction. Now, if we slow this one down, just to keep an eye on what options become available underneath him, you've got a screen which Mariota turns away from because there were three Eagles in that vicinity. Great positioning there from Jalen Mills. Now, this was the play that was heavily shared around social media. We're going to play it at full speed first, and then I'm going to play the analysis I shared on my Twitter, which is at LiamJenkins21 just last night. It's an interesting play, and depending how you look at it, to me, I see a cover two invert. Other people are seeing a cover three robber. The main premise here is that the cornerbacks have half the field of responsibility. The safety drops down to help the linebackers, who are in turn pushing forward, trying to disrupt the run, and what you get is this. I don't want to spoil too much of tomorrow's film room, but this is a play that is being heavily shared on social media without much context. Now, the pass fell incomplete, but for some reason, Waggy Finger over here is still being blamed for it. Now, the Eagles are running an inverted cover two. You've got the corners playing essentially a half of the field each with one safety over the top. Malcolm Jenkins is down here as the fourth linebacker. So that's their way around this Rodney McLeod situation, just getting those cornerbacks a little bit further off the ball. What this means is that it either opens up the flats where Jenkins is having to cover, you either get a pocket of space with an out route, or even worse, if that safety moves, which he has, Jalen Mills is that far away from the ball. Ronald Darby's played it much closer. Mills, not so much. Now, obviously, he's, again, defending half the fields. If we kind of go back, 
Just watch Jalen Mills on this play. He's waiting for that receiver. Was he going to go for a flat at Sidney Jones? He didn't. So he's patient. But at that point, he's given up way too much momentum. And it's obviously just going to be an easy completion. But luckily, Mariota overthrew it. I don't think that's as much on Jalen Mills as it is the play call. That's the risk you take with stacking that box with four linebackers. Or in this case, an extra safety. Mills' positioning was bad. He doesn't have the speed to keep up with the receiver. But, I mean, nonetheless, it's not like... He He's played it and been burnt like some of the other players. He's done everything right. He's just, I think, at that point there, maybe opened his body a bit too far. He's kept his eyes on the quarterback and maybe not looked at where the receiver's heading, which is obviously going to be in that window there. But again, this is going to be much more in-depth in tomorrow's film room. So if you do want to stick around for that, you're new to this Twitter or you've never seen me before, hit follow. Make sure you subscribe to the Philly Sports Network YouTube channel because this is going to be a very, very interesting episode. It wasn't entirely Mills' fault and another quality he brings to the table is leadership. Now here what we see is him actually pointing out to Sidney Jones that there's going to be a receiver in motion. He drops back in coverage as a result and then the moment that that orbit happens, he's pointing up top to Ronald Darby no that the only target is going deep downfield to which it did and luckily fell incomplete but that was quick instincts by Mills and when you take a look at the quarterback view or as I call it the QB view anyway you can see there Mills sticks his arm out moves out of the way for Sidney Jones to adjust in man coverage the moment that ball comes out Mills is already adjusting knowing where that ball's going great awareness by the Eagles corner now like the big near reception earlier this is another play that fell on Jalen Mills that arguably wasn't really his fault it's the same sort of thing. It's a cover three for the Eagles with the two cornerbacks playing extremely deep but when we get to here, both receivers are streaking towards the middle, overwhelming that safety. Ronald Darby should be much, much closer to centre field than he is and that leaves Jalen Mills in a one-on-one -on -one spot where we know he doesn't have the deep speed. Gonna watch this again a second time. Mills does a great job by taking out the sideline not biting on a double move, may I add. That's a rarity in itself and by the time he's closed over the top, the speed isn't there. Where Ronald Darby is I'll never know and that's just an open window for Mariota purely because Mills doesn't have the deep speed but then there were other errors in this game where they clearly were a Jalen Mills problem for the last two years we've heard nothing but double move burnouts and this was another example by Corey Davis he's a big body receiver who can move so elegantly and Mills gets put on the back burners once again a huge catch by the Titans wide out and it's what we've come to expect we slow it down it's a rare press coverage situation that we see now for the former LSU safety Mills motions outside to match up with his man but what always stands out in these situations is that there is next to no contact at the line of scrimmage he doesn't like being aggressive because he knows he doesn't have that deep speed you want to keep that lifeline for as long as possible try and mirror and match and when you're trying to mirror a double move you're always going to be a step behind then you lack the pace and it's only going to end badly and as Doug Peterson said earlier this week offenses are of course now going to plan for that we've seen it on Curls, who's seen it in comebacks. The Titans even did it on slants. Watch this play here. Mills, no physicality at the line of scrimmage. That is the easiest, what should have been a game, you will ever get. Now, Davis drops the pass somehow, sells the outside, cuts it in. Mills has got to move his whole body round. It's too easy until he's got to lift his hands up and catch a ball somehow. So we'll ignore that for now. Point is, Jalen Mills shouldn't have been beaten on that play. Now, the problem with moving Jalen Mills away from the ball is that because he lacks that deep speed by the time he has to start sprinting at full speed with the receiver the receiver's already in sixth gear while Mills is just climbing into third and what you then have is a massive catch up race if you're going down deep now luckily here he was saved by his physicality and that raw aggression that we've come to know and love breaking up a bomb by Marcus Mariota but it should have been a much safer situation and Corey Graham let's be honest wasn't much help there but again we say this is a mix of technique and scheme or at least so does Jim Schwartz but this was another example now we said his positioning was great earlier on but on this Avante Maddox touchdown led up which eventually won the Titans the game he's playing zone coverage here with Malcolm Jenkins the two dip back but at that point the two are frozen next to each other they should never be that close all the receivers on the other side of the field there's nothing happening underneath one of those guys has to drop back my money's on it should be Jalen Mills 
given the amount of cover to the team were playing and it just wasn't a good look. Now the other area of this of course is going to be the penalty flags we've seen time and time again. Leading the league in penalties this year, he actually gets tripped up by a crisp route run by Corey Davis and unfortunately gets a bit grabby at the end, jumps up and down like a school child and unfortunately that one is a PI flag that costs the Eagles dearly. Another rarity was missed tackles. We saw two brutal ones. This one was the worst. That's a tackle that Jalen Mills of yesteryear was making all day long. There's a reason he leads the team in tackles nearly every game, or at least he's up there. And that's because teams come at him so much. But when a team can now do this against you, and Mills has to adjust his angle because of a screen, then why aren't you going to incorporate those running backs? The Titans were frozen in terms of actual running back performance, but screens were a nightmare overall. If I'm honest, this was just the ultimate Jalen Mills game. There were examples like this where he plays excellent man coverage, gets up close and personal with the receiver, and although he doesn't initiate contact, stays glued to him through the route and really disrupts the stem. That's exactly what you're supposed to do in that sort of situation. We see it again in press coverage here. This is what fans want to see. Mills at the line of scrimmage. If you're not going to beat them downfield with speed, at least get in the way of that route and make sure it's a tough throwing window on an intermediate route for Mariota. We see a perfect enigma of this right now. Jalen Mills is going to be draped over the wideout. It's one on one. He knows that there isn't going to be help over the top this time, but watch the way he braces this. The technique here is actually really strong. He lets the receiver try and fake inside, then Mills puts his hands on him first and just kind of feels his way through the rest of that route. And as long as he's within an arm's reach, it doesn't matter about speed because it was never going to be about it in that situation. Some more coverage comes on this next play. This is a lot closer to the cover three that we saw before. Mills is going to be respecting that deep end once again, but look at the way he adjusts his positioning and very almost comes away with an Odell-like interception. Now this may be, in my opinion, one of his best plays of the afternoon. Drops back, keeps his eyes focused, keeps that body open. He doesn't close it off to the backside and then is able to drop back into that pocket and very nearly make a play. Now you'll notice here I didn't spend this video going on about the curls and the comebacks and the receptions and the yards and the touchdowns and well some of the penalties but the reason why is that I've written about this so much for so long. In 2016 I had a whole series where every single week I'd break down the cornerback play that was the main takeaway. The next season we start doing filming videos that was the main takeaway. We're now in year three everybody knows that when Jalen Mills is away from the ball the way to beat him is get up to his face and turn around so he has to adjust and break down on the ball. Every offense knows this. It started with the Giants, it then became the Packers and it has been every damn opponent this year. The world now knows how to beat Jalen Mills but at the end of the day when you look at the tape back, sure some of those plays were his fault but let's be honest. The Eagles are running that coverage because of Rodney McLeod's absence. He's playing away from the ball, having to look after half the field because of Rodney McLeod's absence. Now this is much closely associated to his potential role at safety. I don't think he's there yet. That may be the reason why he hasn't been moved to safety. It's not like he's been killing these situations over and over. It's been wildly inconsistent. And I would rather Mills gives up a penalty 5 yards than 50 yards if I'm a defensive coordinator. But when you look at the bigger picture, is Jalen Mills really as bad as fans are making out? I'm not sure, but when you look at the film like this, sure there are problems, sure there are inconsistencies, it's nothing new. This is the cornerback Jalen Mills always has been, it's the cornerback Jalen Mills always will be. The question is now, what does Jim Schwartz do? Does he move Jalen Mills down to the line of scrimmage? Does he move him inside? Does he move him to safety? Is there going to be a schematic adjustment like there was last week? Either way, something has to be done because at this point, four games in, it's the same double moves, it's the same routes, it's the same penalties and there has to be a change if you are running that Eagles defense. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I want to know your thoughts. If you've watched this video, if you've got a take, drop it down in the comments. I want to hear you sound off. What did you like? Has this changed your mind at all? And don't forget, we want to get to 1,000 likes. So if you could help us get to that goal, that would be phenomenal. From myself, Liam Jenkins, we'll see you next week for another episode of Eagles Film Room. You guys are the best fans on the planet. Thank you so much for all of the love and the attention that you're giving this channel. It means the world to me. I hope to see some of you in London. I'll see the rest of you next week.